All right, since we covered printing out uh, basically outputs, we just kind of learn how to get input in Python. If you recall, if I go up here, we talking about input, output, and process. So process is later because it's more complicated, obviously. Uh, but the output and input is something that we need to do every day for every program. So, so far we just print stuff and realize how we can have output. We have different variables. We output those also. So now the idea is how we can get actually input to the program. All right, it's really simple. Basically, in Python, you just write input. And let me just comment that. So you write input. Then basically, you write your prompt. What is prompt? Prompt is the one, there's a message you show to the user prior getting your input. For example, I'm uh, going to set the variable A. Just going to write a really simple program. I am going to basically, let's say I have uh, my program want to uh, get three variables and get the average or calculate the average and show the result. Okay, so basically if I want to get the input, I simply use a reserve word. You see it says input and prompt. Here I'm just going to show please enter the first number, let's say. Question mark. Um, so the point is, I'm going to... This is going to ask the user for the number. When you get it, you're going to store it somewhere. So we're going to have this stored on number one. There is some tricks here you're going to know. Um, in Python 3, basically when you say input, this input, okay, so in most of the programs, let me just write it that way. In most of the programs, program programming languages the input is in the form of strings means it's a bunch of text so that means if I have a number that would be stored as a string I'll show you why so let's try that and the reason is this so let's say print number one times two so that means if I get a number here from the user and store it in number one as a variable then I'm gonna print that but I'm just gonna multiply it by two let's run it now see what it is here it asks me please enter the first number let's say five so if I put 5, I should see 10 um, if num1 is a number. And as you can see, I don't see 5, I see 55. Because basically you double your string or input. So as far as this is not a number, we don't treat it as a number. You just double, uh, basically duplicate your string. So if you multiply that by 5, you're going to see 5, 5 basically. Wait up, that's a return, let's say 20. That wouldn't be 100, that would be like 25. Let's say I change it to R. And you see you have 20 R. So this is what it is. It's not mathematical approach because the input is not a number. So what I should do here, I'm going to get the number 1, number 2, or number 1 equals 2. I'm gonna use a reserve word integer and get the number one, which was a string or a basically bunch of text, and convert it 
back to integer so I convert it to the integer and store it back to number one I don't want to use another variable it's pointless because I get the number one then convert number one to the integer and store it in number two that would be pointless we're just wasting memory here so it's, as a smart programming is it's gonna get rid of, rid of that sorry let me get that and do this also I can basically get rid of this totally so I'm gonna comment it out and here when I get the input right away I'm converted to integer like that here we go let's try it so if I put 5 see now I see 100 so in that case my input convert to the integer let's say I want to convert this to decimal system so I simply gonna use no okay I'm gonna use float float is a reserve word so float in that case you can do let's say 2.5 and you get 50 question what's gonna happen if I put integer and enter a float number so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 2.5 and I have an error so this is what the error is uh, this is invalid result for integers so you have to have an integer so you have to know what kind of input you get and as you might realize this might be problematic in a sense because uh, if the user puts something that you don't want that might cause an error so we later on we're gonna learn how to validate your input call it input validation loop and such but for now just let it be so I'm gonna change that to the integer again let's get three integer and num2 I'm gonna go int input please enter the second number and I'm just gonna repeat that again number three the third number all right so now I'm gonna get the average as you can now let's define a variable call it average and uh, basically get num1 plus num2 plus num3 and divide that by 3 all right so there is a really important uh, logical sorry <laughs> there's a really important logical error might this happens uh, you gotta pay attention to this when you programs are not smart we are so we're gonna learn this so when you divide the integer by integer let's say you divide 5 by 3 the answer would be a float number it would be 1.5 but as far as the program concerned if you divide the integer by integer it gives you the answer integer only if if you divide integer by float or double number let's say 5 divided by 3.5 uh, that gives you a float number or basically floats divided by int let's say 5.0 divided by 3.0 also gives you a float number so the only case that is when you divide two integer that's the important part is when you're dividing two integer you actually get integer so in that case uh, when you sum three integers and divided by a number you might the answer might not be an integer let's say you have 1 plus 2 plus 2 that would be total of 5 5 divided by 3 
if the answer should be 1.5. But according to the rule I told you here, uh, that's going to show you 1. We don't want that. Um, so how we're going to fix this is either we're going to do this. So we divide this by a float number, which is follow this rule, or simply we're going to convert the whole thing. Now that's the only way. We're going to convert this guys here to float first. Then divide by 3, which is follow this rule here. So either or, you're all set. The only important thing also you have to pay attention is um, arithmetics basically has orders. So plus, okay, multiplication, let's do a star for it. Multiplication, division has priority over summation, which is plus and subtraction. So in this case, the problem would be the division would be first, so the number three would be divided by three, then it's gonna be added with number one and number two. So I'll make an example here. Let's say I have one, two, and three as an input of my program and I divide that by three. So in that case, since the division has the priority, this division will happen and instead of three over three would be one, then the whole thing become four, which is wrong. The answer we expect is basically, you're gonna add this three first, then divide by three. Uh, that being said, over all those four parentheses has priority and also modulation by the way so those are have priority first then is multiplication and division then plus and negative um, subtraction basically um, is multiplication and division has priority over each other? No, not really. Uh, the trick is if you don't know what is what, as far as you follow this, always start from the left to right. That's how program works. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to be careful. I'm going to put the parentheses here. Before I just move forward, I'm just going to get rid of it and show you what I meant practically. I'm going to run this. And here, in terms of first number, 1 second number two, and third number three. So in that case, it's gonna give me two. Oh, I forgot to print the answer. So we're gonna go here, print. Set the average is, and here we're just gonna show the average. Oh, it's okay, sensitive. Just gonna use that. And let's see it again. So one, two, and three. Here we go. See, you see four because the three first divided by three gives you one. Then one plus two is three. Two, three plus one is four. That is wrong. So we're gonna make sure either I do this. That's not the case. So the I'm just gonna put parentheses here. And now, now I have two, so it makes sense. Three plus two, five plus one, six, six divided by three, two. Um, let's try something that give me five, that find another logic error here. So you're gonna go one, two, and two. And here we go. So you have 5 divided by 3 is 1.6. Yeah.